Hey guys, thanks for clicking on my video. So finally, I've potted some of these cuttings that have been sitting on my windowsill for almost over a year. So obviously not all of them have been sitting there for over a year, but a lot of these are like that ivy back there, the um, rubber tree uh, petioles, those have been there for a really long time and those have definitely been there for over a year. So anyway, I finally got around to cutting them and so I'm gonna show you what the roots look like. And I'll also talk about some of the things that you'll wanna consider uh, before leaving them into water for as long as I did. But anyway, if you're new to my channel, do consider subscribing if you wanna learn how to become a better plant parent. Also, if there's anything at all that you found helpful in this video, please do give it a thumbs up because that does really help me out a lot. Okay, so if you like any of the jars or containers that you see here, I'll link my video from last week if you happen to miss that um, of all the containers that I usually get from the dollar store, but otherwise I just use a bunch of empty pickle jars and things like that. So as you can see here, a lot of these roots are super overgrown. They've been ready to transplant into soil for a really long time. My general rule of thumb is waiting until they're about two to three inches long, but depending on your experience and really depending on the thickness and texture of the roots, you can do it either sooner or later. I'll be showing you later in the video, actually throughout the video, the types of roots that each of these cuttings have so that you can know better how to take care of it, like how long you can let it sit in water for and also how much water you give it after you've put it into soil. So despite these cuttings still being alive after only being in water for well over a year, uh, it's actually not great for the plant. So I don't know what the long-term effects are of that, but just realize or consider that it's not getting the nutrients or it's not being able to feed off of the nice healthy bacteria that it usually gets from soil. And so when you do that, I don't know if long-term there are going to be effects in terms of you know, how it's gonna grow in the future. And so you don't actually wanna do that the only other plant or cutting that I've kept in water for about a year and a half is this really long pothos vine that did survive and surprisingly continued to grow. It gave me probably a foot's worth of growth on the vine, but I was so concerned. I should have just left it alone, but instead I thought, let me go ahead and give it some of that stinky fish fertilizer stuff. And so um, I didn't know that you should not do that. Um, it obviously like oxidizes or it does something when it's exposed to air and is still in like a humid water environment. It smelled like just death. It smelled like death. Um, and so I don't recommend that you do that. It's meant all of the nutrients that are in those fertilizers are meant to be digested into the plant or by the plant. And so yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Okay, so here's my little setup here. I'm doing this by my sliding door because it's giving um, the most light. It's kind of hard to film things because I want it to have the most optimum light so that, <laughs> you know, the video quality looks decent for you guys. But here is my little setup. I keep them, I keep my dirt and all my supplies in these two containers and it's just easy for me to, tr you know, transfer upstairs from downstairs where I normally store it. I don't have a garage and so, I don't really have anywhere to keep things like that. Anyway, we're gonna start off with my um, rubber tree plant. I bought this uh, variegated rubber tree plant several years ago, maybe about three, maybe four years ago. Uh, maybe not that long, I can't remember, but it's getting to be too tall. Um, as you can see here, I did also pluck off some of the petioles or the leaves, but somebody told me that you can't actually grow a plant from these, but I'm just, I'm insisting on doing an experiment because for my petioles, my peperomia petioles, those, all of those successfully grew entirely new plants. And so that might be because it's a different variety of plants. It may not work on this one, but I just want to test it out and see, because like I said, these petioles and also these cuttings have grown or have been continuing to grow roots in water for over a year. And so I'm kind of amazed because the roots of the actual cuttings, the ones with the stem are not as, or the roots are not as robust as they are on these petioles. So that's probably due to the fact that the petiole just has a leaf to maintain. So it has a lot more energy to focus on growing roots as opposed to the cutting, which has a stem and a couple other leaves on there. So the, it doesn't have as much energy to devote to generating roots because it has to maintain the stem and as well as the leaves. And so in previous videos, I have explained to not leave so many leaves on your cutting so that it can focus its energy on 
growing the roots. Okay, so next cutting here, we have this ivy. So you can tell by the roots that the um, they're not so crazy like the uh, rubber tree cutting. They're very thin and they're very fine. So with plants like these, um, I'll show you the peperomia later on, they're even more fine than that. But with plants like those, you want to make sure that the roots are actually going to continue to um, stay moist for the next several weeks until you can see signs of growth. Because the roots are so thin that if you forget to keep the soil moist, it's just going to dry out and it may not be able to survive. But um, with the thick roots of the rubber tree plant that you were seeing earlier on, those types of roots do retain a lot of the water and so you shouldn't be as concerned as it drying up if you forget to water it. So those are just a couple of things that you want to consider when you're first, when you're initially potting some of your cuttings up into soil. Okay, so here's my prayer plant. You guys, Thrips got the majority of my prayer plants. This is only the second to the last one that I have. But as you can see, this is actually a little baby that sprouted off of one of the main vines. And so it has a bunch of aerial roots on its own that I'm going to pot, as well as some that developed in water. And so this one is going to be very easy to get to grow into soil. Again, just remember to keep the soil moist for the next several weeks until you can see signs of growth. Mine has already exhibited some signs of growth because that little leaf I was showing you that was still furled up um, has begun to unfurl. So at this point, I'm going to cut back on my watering because I don't want it to just be in soppy soil um, for long periods of time because as you know, that's going to contribute to or lead to root rot. Although for Marantas, they, in my experience, they've been okay if you tend to overwater a little bit. Again, you can't have it in soppy, you know, soaking wet soil for too long because that will definitely lead to root rot. However, um, I've... I've been tending to let my plants dry out a lot more in between waterings and I'm experimenting with just watering from the bottom moving forward because I'm doing everything I can to control my gnat situation which has drastically improved as well as uh, mitigate thrips if I can. I don't know if that's something that I can necessarily control at this point. Who knows? Keep your fingers crossed for me. Okay, moving on to these string of pearls. So these are ones that haven't been in water for that long. I think the last time or the time that I cut these were back in November. And so you can see how fine these roots are. And so um, for these types of plants that are vining, you can actually do this with any vining plant, but um, you want to first develop the roots in water. I've done this experiment. I'll go ahead and link a video here because the ones that I've um, propagated in water and then put into soil while coiling the rest of the vines on top of the soil, they have grown a lot more like robustly as opposed to ones that you just, you know, continue to spray with a spray bottle and just you sit on top of the soil and wait for it to grow roots there. And so that's what I'm doing here because it's worked for me better in the past. Um, the, the ones that I laid just on top of the soil, those have still grown, but they're not as strong. And so um, the mama plants that I got these cuttings from did have a bunch of I'm going to guess that they're spider mites because they were these little red spots that were growing. Last year, this last year has been very bad for me in terms of house plant pests. They've been out of control. I don't know why. Okay. Anyway, so that's why I took cuttings of those. So these are super fine. You can see here that they even look mushy. And so these are cuttings that are really important to keep moist when you first put them into soil. That said, I've had a lot of people comment and say, you know, I just take straight up clippings on this and I don't even get them to propagate in water. I just stick them in the soil and they grow. I've never had been able to successfully do that in my experience. So I'm just sharing with you the things that I do that's worked for me. So in my, again, also in my experience, these grow roots, they start to develop roots um, on this cutting very quickly. However, it takes a long time for them to get some length to the roots. And so I do find myself keeping these in water much longer than I expect. I mean, <laughs> I'm never in a hurry to pot my, pot my plants, as you may know. But um, I do find that they take up a little bit longer to grow. So if you have a couple of these cuttings in water, just be patient, they'll get there. And they kind of grow into like a knot, as you saw um, when I was showing you the roots. 
And so they just got all clumped up, I think because the roots are just so fine and thin that they just get all jumbled up together. But don't confuse their delicate roots as this plant being a delicate plant. It really is not. This is a very robust plant, very fast grower, super easy to take care of. I would recommend this to any novice plant owner. Um, okay, last group of cuttings. So these are my beloved um, Hoya compacta, or what do you call these? Crinkle leaf Hoyas, Hindu rope Hoyas. So like I mentioned before, I think in my last video, I've got a ton of these and they are surprisingly easy for me to grow. When I first got this plant, I found this at Lowe's for like $16.99. It was in a pot that was just super overgrown and so I divided them into four plants and then so since then I've been taking cuttings from those four separate plants. But I was really intimidated by Hoyas. I love the look of Hoyas. I think they are so pretty. There's so many different types of varieties. Hoyas and Peperomias are my favorite types of plants because there are so many of them and they are generally super easy to take care of. But anyway, with the Hindu rope Hoya, they, I don't know what it was, but the first couple of times that I tried to water propagate Hoya clippings, um, it was so difficult for me. They just would not develop any roots and they sat in water for several months and I don't know what I was doing wrong. But ever since the first time that I actually got something to develop roots in water, it's been so easy. And that's why I've ended up with so many of these Hindu Ropoyas <laughs> because they've just been super easy to propagate and grow. So I'm just really shocked about that. But as you saw with the roots of these plants, um, the roots are generally thick. So these are ones that I'm not really too concerned about if they dry up uh, in the soil because they, they like being dry anyway. These do not like sitting in water or in a moist soil environment. And so again, the juiciness of the roots will dictate how much um, concern you'll have for it drying up once you finally transplant it into soil. Okay, so guys, every time I pot new plants into soil, this is what I do. I know some people like to moisten the soil before uh, hand, but I like to do this because I feel like when you use the sprinkler attachment over the soil, it helps the soil to kind of wrap around the roots a little bit better if I'm making any sense. But this is what I normally do. But this time I am adding a new step to my usual routine, which is taking some soapy water solution and really saturating that top layer of soil like I'm showing you here. So aside from being so lazy and hauling all of my potting supplies from the downstairs to the upstairs, another reason why I really drag my feet around potting up my cuttings is that I get a explosion of new fungus gnats every time I pot my cuttings. And so this time around when I did this, I did find that I didn't get any new gnats. So my current situation with the gnats is that they are under control. I used to have so many of them flying all over the place, but I think that it's really helped that the weather has maybe cooled down. I've also started to water a lot of my plants from the bottom and I've been spraying, randomly spraying them with these, the soapy water solution. So recently I have added a little bit of bleach um, to the soapy water solution. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned earlier in the video, but I've done some research and apparently it's not that bad for the plant as long as it's very highly diluted. So I did find that this worked a lot. So if you have that same problem where every time you pop plants and there's new gnats that just, I don't know if they develop, um, you know, from eggs that are already in the soil or what, but this time around I did not get um, any new gnats. So anyway, here are my new cuttings. Over the last couple of weeks, I have been watering these from the bottom and so I don't want to add any moisture on the top for fear that there are any, you know, the gnat eggs, they like to hatch and um, they like moisture, right? So I don't, I wanna prevent the top layer of the soil from being moist. So these string of pearls, they're just gonna have to rely on their roots to grow. I, I think I have too many in there to be honest. <laughs> but we'll see how well they do. I am not spraying them at the top as I did in my last video. Um, and we'll see what happens if these petioles are going to produce a new plant for me, just like my, um, what do you call those? My obtusifolias and my peperomia petioles or my parallel peperomia petioles. But yeah, this is my new <laughs> Hoya nursery. I have definitely been following my own rule about controlling the cuttings that I take, but I cannot help it with the Hindu Ropoya because they are just so easy 
Um, I don't want to jinx myself by saying that I haven't found any thrips on any of my Hoyas. <laughs> I mean, I probably just did, but I mean, they're such wonderful and easy plants that I just, I can't help myself. So anyway, guys, that's the end of my video. I hope you found something helpful. Thank you so much for making it all the way till the end of this video. I know I can get a little bit rambly, but hey, there's no script here. I'm just like going with the flow. Anyway, guys, I hope you're taking care and until next time, bye. Also, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. It really does help me out a lot, guys. Okay, bye.